Hello, I have added a bunch of new art to my Redbubble store. My art is now available on not only t-shirts and stickers and art prints, but now also on mouse pads and caps and all sorts of things. I will have a link in the description box below if you would like to check it out. Thank you! Hello everyone, thanks for joining me for another video, I know it's been a while, I've just been busy doing stuff, but I'm still here, don't worry. But yeah, it is Inktober season, I'm not really participating myself this year because I simply just didn't have enough time to do it, so... But I'm still in the mood for some ink painting, so let's do that. So I felt I wanted to explore the Kurtaki Saibuko Shinbi ink sticks a bit further. These are so gorgeous. So I worked a little bit with these last year. It is traditional Japanese ink in shape of ink sticks that you grind on this ink stone and you mix it with water and you get ink to paint with. So I would like to explore these a little further, maybe play around with the different colors a bit more. So yeah, let's get into it! So my very first idea was to combine a few of the official Inktober prompts into one painting, but I did a few sketches and I didn't really feel it, but I wanted to make something cute and whimsical, as most of my illustrations are at this moment. The description of my current art style is basically cute and colorful. This time I'm drawing a fox, I thought it would look nice with its colorful orange fur and add to the autumn vibes that I'm going for. I am definitely an autumn person, it is my favorite season. Cozy clothes, tea, reading books, beautiful nature colors, mushrooms. So I wanted to cram all of that into this piece, cozy colorful autumn vibes. So I'm making the sketch on my iPad as usual, and the best way that I've found so far to trace the sketch over to a paper is to send the sketch over to my computer and trace it from the computer screen. It works okay to trace it from the iPad screen too, but since it is a touch screen, it is very easy to accidentally move the sketch around under the paper, so I find it easier to trace it from the computer screen. You could also print out the sketch and then trace it, that is also an option. Then finally, let's make some ink. I decided to start with the colors for the background, so I'm preparing a few blues and a green. I'm adding a tiny bit of water to the hill of the inkstone, and then I rub the ink stick in the water on the stone. Phoenix is of course helping me, doing quality check, very helpful. It definitely takes a little time to get a deep color, you have to be patient. But when it's pigmented enough, I transfer the ink with a pipette to a paint palette. And then, since I don't want to waste the pigments that is left in the inkstone, I add a little more water and mix it, and then I also transfer that to the paint palette, so I can use it as a lighter ink wash, then rinse and repeat with other colors. And once again, when working with these inks, I have only used them one time before, but I am so amazed by how smooth they are. There is no graininess or pigment particles floating around in the paint, as you think it would do, since they are ground from dry ink sticks, but they are clear and bright and pigmented. They lighten up or fades just a little once they dry, but it isn't super noticeable. To me personally, they acts just the way watercolors should, even if they are inks, I know, but it feels just like working with watercolors. Oh. 
For the rest of the painting, I would need some reds and yellows and more green, so I had to prepare those too. It definitely is a project to make ink with these ink sticks if you want multiple colors to work with, but it is also very rewarding. It really feels like you put a lot of time and effort into your work and the paint you're using. I also knew beforehand, before I started painting, that I would have to mix the different colors to get orange, for example, for the fox's fur. And I was a little worried that maybe these inks wouldn't want to mix together very well. I have worked with the Japanese Gansai Tambi paints before. They're kind of like watercolors, but not really. And they work a lot better if you don't mix them too much, because the pigments tend to separate a little, I have noticed, but I had no problem at all mixing new colors from these ink sticks. Red and yellow made a very lovely orange, and I mixed the different greens and the blues and so on, so I'm very happy that it worked so well. So to add to the coziness of this illustration, I made a fox holding a lantern and I first thought it would just be there and I would add a little extra yellow around it to illustrate the shine or glow coming from the lantern. But I wanted to play around with different tones, so I added a circle around the lantern and everything outside the circle would be a little darker. And then inside the circle, the colors would be more washed out and lighter, basically to illustrate the light coming from the lantern in a more stylized way. I haven't really done this type of effect before, so I thought it would be fun to try it out. I also thought it would add something more interesting to this illustration. It is cute, but there isn't that much happening, to be perfectly honest, so I thought this would be more interesting to look at. I'm actually really happy with how the light effect turned out, since the ink is so pigmented, I could use very light ink washes, but still get fairly saturated color tones. My only regret with this illustration, however, is the composition. Now afterwards, I would have turned the fox facing the other way, so that the light circle would have ended up in the middle of the illustration, or if I had moved the fox further to the left, it is a little unbalanced as it is right now with a light circle so far to the right and with the fox facing the same direction. It, it just bothers me. I should have moved the fox to the right in the sketch, but when I sketched this, I didn't have the full idea how I wanted to paint the light. That is something that I came up with later. I tested drawing the circle around the lantern further to the left, but then it bothered me too much when the lantern wasn't centered in the circle, so yeah, it just had to be this way, but I still like it and I really love how colorful this piece turned out. To add some more magic and shine to this piece, I made some stars in the sky and I tried using a white paint pen at first, but acrylic ink worked a lot better. Then to tie it all together, I added a little bit of line art with a brush pen. I really like how soft it looks without the lines, but I felt it needed the lines to look a little more complete and I do not regret it.
I love these paints or inks and I would probably use them a lot more if they weren't so time consuming to prepare. Even if it is totally worth the sore wrist, I had a lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed it too. Good luck to everyone with the Inktober challenge if you're participating. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats, bye!